Can the heroes of the league pull it together for one last world saving hurrah, or are they too broken to ever fit together again? Well, let's hop into the pages of Justice League Last Ride issue number two and find out together, shall we? So then, in the previous issue, it was alluded to that there was some matter of climactic event that ended up breaking up the Justice League and killing many of the original members. Well, as issue 2 starts, we get a little insight into what exactly that was. It would seem that Darkseid, in a moment of actually pretty commendable creativity, decided to further weaponize the boom tubes that the new gods used to move around the universe, and instead use them to move massive, incredibly destructive explosives to the planets of all of his enemies, which is a pretty long list. Wonder Woman had gone to Apocalypse to do battle with the female Furies, decked out in her classic Kingdom Come armor, which I guess we can also call her movie armor now as well. While Batman and John Jones the Martian Manhunter snuck their way inside Darkseid's control room to try and find a way to shut off the bombs remotely. The only problem, though, is that this computer system is incredibly advanced, even for a machine mind like Cyborg. And it's all the other heroes of Earth can do to try and get as many people away from major cities as possible in hopes they won't be wiped out when the bombs eventually hit. Aquaman isn't nearly as lucky, though, falling to the first bomb. Now, if things on Earth are bad, they're even worse on planet Oa right now. The Green Lanterns were caught completely unaware when Darkseid and his forces broke the treaty and boom-tubed into their territory. Superman and the other Lanterns are doing everything in their power to try and push them back, but it's a losing effort. Meanwhile, Hal Jordan pre his own weird parallax armor is trying to save the last guardian. I say last because it seems the rest of the little blue people have left to the other parts of the universe in hopes that if Oa fell and the power battery was taken by Darkseid that they'd still hopefully be able to rebuild somehow. Unfortunately though, it would seem the Lord of Apocalypse is on to their game and Darkseid ends up coming through a portal carrying the slain dead of the Guardian ranks. Now believe it or not, it's actually right there that the flashback ends and we end up hooking back up with the main timeline story. Batman and the Flash, who actually turns out to be Wally, I'm not sure if I realized that or not during the first issue, are currently out in space right now dodging black holes on their way to Planet Apocalypse, the idea being it would be the perfect place to take Fugitive from Justice Lobo before his big trial is to be held. Batman, of course, had to be guilted into going on this trip and is more broody than he normally is, if that's even possible. Wally tries to find a sympathetic ear with Wonder Woman, who is doing everything she can to make sure Lobo doesn't escape. Wonder Woman tries to calm the Flash down by saying that once they they get to Apocalypse, things should get a lot easier. After all, no one's lived on that planet for a long time now. It's just a dead old, burnt-out husk. That being said, Lobo thinks differently, saying that there's still plenty left on that godforsaken planet that could kill you one way or another. The trip ends up facing a major detour, though, when the heroes end up coming upon an alien spacecraft that is stalled out in the middle of nowhere. Again, without talking about it, without even having to confer with one another, they all jump into action in their own way to try and save these people. It's actually a pretty solid piece of characterization, if I do say so. Batman and Superman aren't really on speaking terms right now, but they know the right thing to do when it happens, and even though they haven't worked together seemingly for years in this story, they manage to get right back to it like nothing has changed. Ultimately, though, it's Hal Jordan the Green Lantern who ends up doing the most heavy lifting with his construct power, stopping this alien ship from getting swallowed up by a black hole. Hmm, isn't it interesting? The first issue was all about how Batman and Superman are really starting to feel the years, psychologically if not physically. And yet here we have Green Lantern whose powers still seem to be off the charts as if he was in his prime. Interesting. I wonder what that could possibly mean moving forward. It's not just Hal either. Superman ends up having a heart-to-heart -heart with John. Stewart as well. John says that he did the right thing back there, helped people in need, and made a tough decision in a tough situation. Obviously, John's words here have a double meaning. He's congratulating Superman for what he did here in this situation with the ship, but he's also probably talking about something that happened in the past, too. What we don't exactly know, and we're gonna have to find out in the next issue as the comic comes to a close right after that. And so that was Justice League Last Ride issue number two, everybody, and once again, I like the picture that Ship Zdarsky is painting here. It's a real mystery. Why did the League break up? Who's dead? Who's still alive? And who is potentially at fault, if anyone at all? Also, if this ship rescue is any indication, can the heroes end up closing the wounds of the past and getting back together as a team? I mean, the book is called Last Ride, after all, but that doesn't mean that some incarnation of the Justice League won't survive into the future. Then, of course, we have the added extra wrinkle 
sprinkle of the Green Lanterns and what they and Hal Jordan seem to want to accomplish. Furthermore, Green Lanterns and Oa were actually much more involved in the breaking up of the Justice League than I first thought. Maybe it's too early to call, but I'm going to say maybe Hal's the secret villain on this one. Maybe he's Parallax again. I don't know, but there's something up with him. Overall, I'd feel comfortable giving this one another 8 out of 10. Zdarsky continues to be one of the most consistent writers at either of the big two comic companies right now. Hey there everyone, it's your pal Kate Joel again, and if you're seeing my face right now, that means you watched at the end of the video, and I'll always be grateful for that. Retention helps in this crazy YouTube game, and so does becoming a patron. If you head on down to the description, you can find a link to my Patreon page. Recently just redid all the tiers, a lot of cool stuff offering up there, exclusive commentaries, exclusive polls, uh, behind the scenes concept art for Capes and Quest, that's the brand new D&D show I've started soon. Never been a better time to become a patron. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and help the channel grow and you know help me continue to deliver content like what you just saw so i want to thank you all and i will see you again next time bye bye